Hello, my name is Quinn Lloyd. I am 14 years old. My father and grandfather are the owners of Intiset Technologies. I'm performing this demonstration of how to assemble Intiset's thin mini ITX computer case and to show how easy it is for anybody to do. This is one of the only 1U high computer cases on the market today built for HTPC setups installed in AV racks. 1U means 1 and 3 quarter inch high, the smallest height allowed in an AV rack. Look at how small the case is and yet it has all the power of the latest Intel chips and CPUs. Thin mini ITX motherboards are very popular now because they not only have the power of full size boards, but the I.O. panel on the back of these motherboards is only half as high as those standard versions. You can get these boards from manufacturers like Asus, ECS, Gigabyte, and others. There are even some Intel boards still available in this form factor. This case will handle all of the variations of each manufacturer's thin mini ITX motherboard. It has an aircraft aluminum front panel and top which helps to dissipate heat from the system. The bottom is made with heavy gauge painted steel to provide the case with support. You can see an indentation for a customized P-Touch label. On the front panel we have two USB 2.0 ports as well as two audio ports for the headphones and a microphone. Note that the bottom of the case there are four holes 100 millimeters apart so that you can mount the case vertically. This is VESA compatible. We also have a small window on the front panel that allows either of our Intiset infrared receivers to be mounted inside. We are now ready to begin the process. First we need to remove the 10 small black screws that hold the cover onto the body of the case. Be careful that you put these screws in a safe place. Notice that after I remove the top, you can see pre-installed components of the case. You can also see the hard drive bracket. We have a rear 40mm case fan right here. If you want more cooling, you can add up to two more 40mm fans right here on the side. Also, you can see the cables installed. Right here we have a dual USB 2.0 cable which plugs onto the motherboard USB header. And here is the audio cable that plugs into the motherboard audio head. It has leads for both power and blue LED that are in this power button. These cables plug onto the front panel motherboard header. I will show you those headers and how to install the cables in a minute. Now remove the two screws that hold the hard drive bracket in place. For today's installation we will be using an ECS Thin Mini ITX motherboard. We will install an Intel LGA1155 socket CPU. We are using the Intel L3 CPU which has plenty of power for most uses. We will also be using a Dynatron K199 CPU cooler that has a side blowing airflow that is required for the case. Now install the motherboard into the case. Remove the four post screws and be sure that the insulating sheet is in the correct location. Then gently place the motherboard onto the four mounting posts, being careful to line up the I.O. connectors on the motherboard with the holes on the I.O. plate. Be sure that no parts of the I.O. plate are blocking any of the connector openings on the motherboard. Screw down the motherboard with the four post screws provided. Now let's attach some of the cables before we install the notebook size hard drive. Run the fan cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard and plug it in. Attach the case fan cable to any of the fan headers available. Some motherboards will assign a header for the case fan so that the heat magnament software on the board can control and report the fan activity. Attach the front panel USB 2.0 cable to the USB header like this and attach the audio cable to the motherboard header like this. Finally, attach the power button leads. Plug the two power switch connectors onto the power switch header and then plug in the two power LED connectors into the LED header pins. Be sure to put the LED positive and the LED negative connectors in the appropriate pins as marked on your LED header pins. When you start your computer, if the blue LED in the center of the power button is not on, 
then switch the LED connectors on the pins on the header as the positive and negative connectors are likely reversed. Your motherboard will come with an SATA power cable like this that must be used for hard drive installation. We've provided an SATA data cable like this that comes with the case. It's a custom mini SATA data cable that will fit in small places. Attach your hard drive or solid state drive onto the hard drive bracket provided with the screws that come with your drive. The SATA connectors must be facing the part of the bracket with two legs connected to the base with the mounting holes. Drive at the bracket onto the case to see how the mounting holes line up and to see how the single supported leg fits onto the motherboard. On some motherboards like this one, we have cut the leg slightly so that it rests on the component that was underneath it. When everything is clear from the dry fit, install the SATA power cable onto the motherboard. Then, install the SATA data cable we provided onto the motherboard. Slide both cables through the opening in the drive bracket. You will need to route the cables in such a way that it does not block the rear case fan from circulating air forward. Secure the bracket to the bottom of the case with the two screws provided. Attach the power cable onto the drive's power connector and the data cable onto the drive's data connector. It is important that you keep all of the cables in the case as neat as possible. If needed, use nylon wire ties to keep the cables in place. The goal is to allow as much airflow inside the case as possible. When you are done, your installation should look something like this one. You are now ready to fire up your computer and load the operating system. We hope you enjoy your thin mini ITX computer case from Intiset.